All right, let's go right here and decide. Look at that. Oh, your boy's come through in the world. He's got a, a cock for an emblem signal. <laughs> All right, it is time for Heads to Row, because here in Weed the Revolution, we're about to unlock the old guillotine going forward. Now, that being said, we're also going to be doing this video as the last one in my preview that I kind of had planned. So if you guys are enjoying it, want to see more beyond this point, let me know in the comments. Am I leaving a thumbs up in the video? I'll check out your feedback and see if it's something you guys want to continue seeing on the channel. Otherwise, all the information for this game will be down below in case you want to pick it up for yourselves. And a couple of you guys have already apparently picked up the game and have let me know that it changes by run. Like, you guys have already gotten cases right off the bat that apparently I did not. So every single time you do a run-through, you get different cases as well, which is fairly cool. I did not know about that. So anyway, King Louis is indeed gone. What case are we pulling up here today? Not sure. Who is this? They're bringing in John. Where do you, John? Please introduce yourself. John Ebert, the conqueror of the Bastille and vanquisher of the tyrant de Lunay, the hero of all Parisians. John Ebert, you are accused of raping Miss Elodie de Pontalba, daughter of Baron Thomas de Pontalba. Do you plead guilty? That's a very serious that's a very serious thing, my dude. I don't plead anything. That bourgeois and her counter-revolutionary father are filthy liars. We need to bear in mind the possibility of criminal collusion in the charge. That's right, those rich swines love their machinations. The evidence speaks against them. Girlish duplicity in the Pontalba's plots prove nothing. Alright, well. This one we can't take his head off, but apparently nobody's in, in support of that. Oddly enough, Common folk and revolutionaries both want this man to run free. I guess um, whoever he might have apparently raped. I'm not really very popular with the people because everybody's saying acquittal. So if we go with this one, it would not be the worst thing. Just because, you know what, I need to get some revolutionary points. Otherwise, um, off with my head will happen pretty soon. So this should be a fairly easy one. I think we're going to go with acquittal. I hope. I don't feel bad acquitting this man in case things... Um, point to him being definitely doing this, but let's find out. We have apparently rape and burglary. Two things. Uh, the famous street urchin who killed the governor of the Bastille de Lunay and carried his head on a pike has recently been detained. After the triumph of the revolution, he reached the nadir of his life. Though many people still consider him a hero, they do not care that the Parisians' archives are filled with complaints about thefts, robberies, assaults on women. So he was a scumbag. He, he, he beheaded a dude that everybody hated and, you know, carried his head on a pike, but he was still a scumbag. The current case is much graver, as Ebert is accused of raping a 16-year-old Elodie de Pontalba. The charges were brought by the victim's father, Baron Thomas de Pontalba. It is widely known that the Pontalba was a relative and friend of Governor de Lunay. So, we could maybe, maybe assume that could be revenge. Maybe it didn't happen. Maybe. The crime allegedly took place in the tenement belonging to the victim's family. John was detained by people working outside while trying to escape the building. Elodie gave a written statement saying that the incident took place on a holiday and Jean used the absence of the Baron and most of the servants to break into the tenement. So everybody was off. The Baron was in there and most of the servants to break into the tenement. Once he was inside, he entered her room and raped her. The incident was witnessed by Anne Michel. Elodie's governess. It was she who alarmed the workers about disturbing noises coming from her charge's room. A number of witnesses felt obliged to inform us that Anne Michelle is known for her psychotic jealousy and her numerous romances with the people of France. On Michelle's testimony, usually in the mornings Miss Elodie and I read, however the chef had that day off so I was preparing tea. Then I heard her screaming. I ran to her room but stopped when I heard the male voice. I was scared and asked for help. Right. The results of the medical examination. The examination revealed the following. Defloration. Minor attrition of the genital area. Bruising and hemorrhaging of the arms, spine, and face. Hemorrhaging so pinned her arms down. Try to cover her mouth probably with his hand. Spine from being pinned down, bruising. So break into the tenement. This was, I'm going to say this was um, either an accusation that's going to have to be an accusation, probably. Because it's not, um... 
course of event. Course of events are not here today. Famous defendant. That's the offender's personality. Okay, we have seven more questions to reveal. There's also a trap here. Gotta be careful for that one. Rape is gonna be an accusation, obviously. Multiple complaints. Um, how did that work into this thing again? Hold up. Okay, so I think multiple complaints should probably be offender's personality, right? Yes. Okay, so there's many complaints about him. There's more for rape as well. We got the accusation. Uh, I guess there's also a testimony on the rape, right? Yes. Okay, so we got that one too. Four more questions to reveal, and we got one, two, three, four. Wow. Six links still. So there's definitely, that's because of the trap that we got here. Um, so what do we know for a fact? Break in tenement, that was the method. Elodie de Pontalba. Um, she's the one with an accusation too? Yes, okay. Two more questions to reveal. The governor of the Bastille's relatives. Would that be like extenuating circumstance? No. Motive? I guess they have motive too, sure. Because he beheaded and took his head on a bike. One more, apparently. We got these two available here. Famous defendant. Got it. Alright, so all the questions have been unlocked. Very good. Did you know the Baron de Pontalba is a relative of the deceased governor de Lunoy? No, but the ex but that explains a lot. The whole case was conjured up by de Pontalba. He wants to get rid of me because I freed France from a tyrant. De Lunoy's family should have been executed a long time ago. So, you would not call rape an instrument in the war against the monarchist? Monarchy should be decapitated, and their daughter should be... thanking the heroes of the revolution. How did you break into the tenement belonging to the Baron de Pontalba? Why would I break in? I used the back door. How did you know about that entrance? The Baron's daughter told me. She also informed me that her beloved father and most of her servants wouldn't be at home. She told you to visit her for that specific purpose. She was giving me very clear signs. All the aristocrats are whores, wow. Are you saying that you came to Baron de Montalba's house at the invitation of the victim? That young bee promised me a nice afternoon. She explained everything in detail. Let Jean go! Quiet, people. The judge is belonging to is beginning to understand. Remain calm and he will soon let me go. <laughs> well, apparently the jury didn't like that, because it brought you towards prison. Alright, did you find a particular pleasure in the abuse of women? Or do you find? Do you know Miss Elodia de Pantalba's before the incident? Well, if he, apparently she invited him. Must have. She flirted with me every time she visited the Café Procop. And she came to every dispute between Danton and Murat. I finally gave that girl what she was asking for. So you admit to your guilt? Yes, but it wasn't rape. Show me one girl that would say no to a hero. You say you met her at the Café Procopa? I highly doubt that such a young lady would go to a place like that all by herself. Who said she was alone? Anne brought her, and everyone knows she likes to have fun. Are you talking about Anne Michelle, Miss Elodia's governess? That's right. So that was not the first time you entered the house of the victim's family? What victim? Anyway, yes, I was there a few times and I know it well. Let me just say that Anne Michelle and I have explored every... Spare us the details. The old whore took the young whore for a walk. <laughs> oh, the people in the stands is so hilarious. Okay, um, let's bring this woman in. Now that you've um, mentioned a couple of things here, we might have a question for her. Citizen, what is your name? Anne Michel, Miss Elodie de Pantalba's governess. What do you know about the case? Ebert is guilty and should be killed. He used our relationship to get closer to the Baron's daughter and hurt her. What do you mean? He knew exactly when the servants had a day off and when the Baron left for the Legislative Assembly. Did he learn those facts from you? Not directly. He paid me several visits at Paran de Pontalba's house. Did it not occur to you that he may use this knowledge against the Baron's family? I see. Did the Baron know about your meetings? No, the Baron had important things to worry about in the personal lives of his servants. Why did you neglect your duties and stop looking after the victim? That day, the Baron ordered me to take care of the house. Mr. Lodi didn't have any classes and was spending time in her room. 
And you did not hear the accused entering the building? No, I was busy in the kitchen. I wasn't alerted until I heard sounds of a struggle and Miss Elodie's screams coming from her room. I find it baffling that you did not hear anything before then. I can't explain that, but I was making a lot of noise while cooking. Excuse me? Excuse me, one second. Oh, I can't bring it up right now? She said cooking. Testimony, didn't the testimony say she was making tea? Is watching the house not one of your responsibilities? Well, yes, but I can't be in two places at once. No, oh, I can't even grill her? Yo, yo. Bring this up right here. Bring this up right here. So I was preparing tea. The chef at the day office, I was preparing tea. Not cooking, I was preparing tea. You find a particular pleasure in the abuse of women. Why would I abuse women when there are nicer things to do with them? Well, unless they like it. Are you suggesting that the victim wanted to get raped and beat? I didn't force her to do anything, and I definitely didn't beat her. The medical examination proves clearly that she was injured. Better ask the Puntalba who battered her. He was furious when he found out who was in bed with his sweet daughter. Are you suggesting that he assaulted his daughter because you, she consorted with you? It wouldn't surprise me. Aristocrats do worse things than beating their own children. The victim is but a frail girl that you really have to beat her that badly. Why would I beat her? I didn't even have to undress her. She removed her clothes by herself. She jumped out of her dress, unfastened my belt and... We don't need to hear the details. Monsieur le judge, I can tell you everything in great detail if you want me to. I don't, I'd rather not hear the details. Did she take her clothes off because you threatened her? She would have threatened me if I had refused her. <laughs> go on, we're listening. Silence if you want gossip, go to the market. Oh, I went all the way up. Oh. Look, as long as you don't go to, like, guillotine country, I guess we can still do the equipment. How many of your previous victims have you raped? None. I've done many things, but luckily I'm still young and handsome enough to not need violence to be with the woman. Then what were all those women accusing you of? I have no idea. They didn't complain when we were together. Were you ever sentenced by for assaulting a woman? They never proved my guilt. And they let them go this time too. Then why are there s they making those accusations? They probably just wanted money. I could just go prison. That wouldn't piss off the revolutionaries anymore. It would, you know, but this is like a free, easy... Ever I'm going to go acquittal. I feel bad about it, but... Acquittal it is. I don't feel great about it. What, what the hell is this? Okay, so this is probably what you guys are telling me about. So it's going to get more in-depth soon, and this is probably it. So now, that especially because we got this guy over here. Report. Was his act counter-revolutionary in nature? No, I don't think so. How did the defendant sign, explain signs of assault on the victim's body? He said that her father beat her. Did the defendant attempt to explain any background of to explain the background of the rape. He does not remember he was intoxicated. That's not true. He claims to have never touched the victim. He said it was the victim who initiated. That's the one. Okay. So that's what I'm going with here. Here's my signature. And the prosecutor, I guess, will probably go over it. No. The judgment for Jean Ebert is not guilty. Take the defendant away. I must admit that his guilt was not clearly confirmed. That's true as well. You know what? Even though he's got, like, the personality of a scumbag, like, it's not, like, 100% confirmed that he could say it was possibly rape, you know? Are you trying to justify your, your judging here, Falcon? Yes, to some degree. The jury noticed you making the wrong choices and foregoing justice. The rumors are spreading fast. Oh, come on. Common folk. Negative two influence two. No! Oh, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, huh? Proceed here. Due to the establishment of a revolutionary tribunal, we need to prepare an official stamp. I was told to ask you, citizen, because President Devoye is indisposed. How much did he drink? He was not able to say. Shall we? <laughs> Alright. Oh, we got a stamp now. Hey, alright. What do we got here? Alright, so after much careful consideration, I came over here with this one. Because I am the cock of the walk. There was like a raven, there was like an eagle, there was no falcon, unfortunately. So, we're gonna go with the rooster here, because um, your boy is the cock of the walk. So let's sign this ready to confirm. I don't feel like roosters get enough love when it comes to like, you know, showing them off on emblems. So I'm gonna go with the rooster. Thank you for your time. I know it's late. The stamp should be ready tomorrow. Good night. Alright. 
And we have no story event today, so we get a chance to hopefully... I think we're doing fairly good, everybody, except, um... The White. So, uh, we could also work on tomorrow's trial, which means everybody takes a hit, but apparently you will unlock more question effects in court. So that could be fairly good. But I need to get that wife thing above average at least, so let's see here. Opening that at the theater. Two people would like that. Two of you would not. Playtime with the children. Apparently the, the wife would not like that. Paragraph codes. You like that. Two people hate it. Demonstration. Oof. Oh man, there's none for the wife other than opening that at the theater. More than likely, I mean, she's going to go up above half, but then Papa is going to go down below half. But hopefully Sun doesn't drop too much. He's right at half. Sonny boy, don't... Don't do your dad dirty this way. Above half? Don't do your dad dirty. That's fine. That's still very, very good. Everybody's in the blue. Very good. Okay. All right, we have Matteo Perel. Tragically, we are losing control of the streets. People feel betrayed by the king. And some believe him to be a spy trying to elude justice. Special means are recommended when suppressing unrest. We all need an opinion from the judges to make sure we are working legally. In other words, you need the blessings to shoot at protesters. People can't control their emotions and are hurting other citizens as a result. Look at the windows. Or look at the windows, yeah. Next time, they might do something worse than just throw rocks. It pains us to see unrest growing in the streets of Paris. Commander-in-Chief Burel has informed us that the Guard is no longer able to control the situation through peaceful means. It is recommended that he is allowed, or he be allowed, to use more immediate methods to protect the innocent civilians but we would like to know what the tribunal's opinion is on the matter. Oh yeah, you want to know my opinion. You just want me to confirm it or not. And you want me to do it for a fact. I approve of the National Guard's use of force against ruffians ruining the capital. Accept or reject? Well... I imagine this will probably impact me one way or the other. Would this be... This, this would have to impact the common folk. Do you think it would give me some extra points with the revolutionaries, perhaps? Or maybe not. I'm gonna accept. The Guard is tasked with protecting innocents from those who are unable to control their behavior. I approve of the greater freedom the use of the National Guard. If you want to go out there and protest, that's fine. But, um, don't hurt people. So, yes. Go ahead. Let's go with the Iron Fist here. Oh, my, my, my little sigil thing. Hells yeah. Alright, let's go right here on the side. Look at that. Oh, your boy's come through in the world. He's got a, a cock for an emblem signal. <laughs> let's hope it's not too late to stop this madness. Oh, let's see. It's, it's all bananas now, Matthew. There's an interesting euphemism for musket fire. It's true. The mob wanted to act as both judge and jury and hang people from the street. Lamps. Poor Pachard was almost hanged. Pachard? Claude Pachard? Exactly. The beloved tutor of your Frederic. You had to dismiss him after the incident with the oath of the clergy, did you not? Yes. Frederick tells me from time to time that he misses his teacher. Oh, remember that um that drawing we got? Monsieur Bouchard et moi? Oh, so the kid was talking about the teacher. Who apparently almost got hung. Um, what are you doing? The trial is about to begin. It's about Monsieur Bouchard. News travels fast. He's been accused of counter-revolutionary activities. You know him. It can't be true. It's not so simple. Leave before somebody hears us. Papa, please. Go home. Think about the family. For once, at least. Papa? Look, I thought about the family. The other day when I had to go out and drink, I broke that promise to come back home. So don't tell me you think about the family. Revolutionaries plus one. Common folk negative two, revolution is negative two. Oh. Oh, where do we stand here? Okay, that's not too bad. I mean, we're low, but, you know, at least we're in the closer side to the medium than we are to the... I'm gonna die. Please introduce yourself. Monsieur le judge, you know me. State your personal information, or there will be consequences. Claude Pouchard, Monsieur le judge. You stand accused of spying for the counter-revolutionaries and criticizing the existing order. Do you admit to these crimes? I am innocent. The accusation is exaggerated and comes from the ill will of the accusers. Suggesting that the revolutionary government is acting in ill will? 
typical of a priest. So if we take a look at this over here, death penalty by the common folk. They want this man's head. Prison says revolutionaries and obviously the family want an acquittal. Well, we are out of time. I'm going to wrap it up here for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see more, we will come back from here and go forward. Otherwise, we will wrap it up here. But all the information for this game will be down below because you want to pick it up for yourselves. Definitely do enjoy it. But um, I'll leave it up to you guys to decide whether we do some more. I'll catch you guys then.